This ain't no game round here. It's more like religion. If we built this thing right here. A football tradition. Just everybody get up. Feast your eyes on the highlight of small town life. It's Friday night. Welcome to another edition of the Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week. Week number three, and it's our first game here in Bell Chase as we're going to try and talk up, get over the public address that's going on behind us. And we're here for the game between the visiting Bruley Panthers and our Bell Chase Cardinals. Joining me as always to coach Amos Cormier and coach Bell Chase kind of surprising some people with this high-powered offense we've seen so far. Bruley presents a bit of a different test, kind of a traditional playoff contender. Uh, what can we expect to see from this Panther team and from this Bell Chase offense tonight? Well, Jason, let me take you for a walk down memory lane. The last time that the Bruley Panthers came to Plaquemines Parish was in the 1950s, and they played the Burris Wildcats. And the score was something like 58 to nothing, and I happened to be standing with my uncle, and somebody from Bruley stood up, and Burris was really beating up on them badly, and he said, you know, it's unfair to have those big bars from Burris against our little bars. And my uncle had pitched for the Pelicans and struck out Casey Stengel, turned around, and he said, we can't help it if you don't grow them big and bruly. Now, the moral behind that story is always, always take up for your team and your place where you live. So we'll see how they grow them now in Bruley in a couple of minutes as we'll get set for your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week. All the action right after this. And welcome back to the Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week as Bruley's going to kick it away. Darian Cobbs has the ball teed up. And it looks like... Trey Green goes back to return it for the Cardinals. And Jason, tonight we don't forget you have the Arrington connection with DeCluitt, Silve, and Miller. And also keep your eye out for number 42 on special teams. That would be Brett Dingler, just a freshman. So the kick goes through the end zone for the touchback. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Cardinals. They will play from the 20 yard line. And coach, one thing that we kind of worried about with tonight is the threat of rain. It looks like it may hold off, but I guess we should all knock on wood and uh, hope that we can keep it dry for the next couple hours. Yeah, there's uh, at times there's no breeze, and then all of a sudden the flag starts taking off and really flapping. So it's going to be one of those nights, and it looks like Bell Chase is going into the wind as they open on the offensive series. Hicks on first down, drops back. Looks around, throws a pass, and it's incomplete. Tries to get it to Devin Silv. So nothing doing on first down. This will bring up second and 10 for the Cardinals from the 20-yard line. And Devin Silv and Taryn Ankelard have been the two big running backs for the Cardinals. And, of course, Andrew Hicks is pulling the trigger at the quarterback spot. Ready to go in a hurry. Hicks is going to keep it himself. Looks to the outside. He's got a block. Down the sideline to the 40, pushed out of bounds. Near midfield, they're going to mark him out at the 48-yard line, so big gainer. Very patient run for Andrew Hicks as he just waited for the blocks to develop along the near side, turn the corner at the, just the right time. A mark of a true running back is one who has patience and allows the people to get downfield and set up his running pattern. So three receivers, a tight end, Hicks, calls for the football. He's going to hand it off to Silv. Silv tries to get to the outside, finds some opening. He's into Panther territory near the 46-yard line. And so far, Jason, it looks like the Cardinals have established a perimeter game. That's two good gains around the end. And I'm sure they'll continue to exploit that. Second down, four to go. Hicks calls for the football, and now they check to the sideline. Four wide receivers, three to the wide, far side of the field. Silv resets to the near side of Hicks. Takes the football, drops back. Quick screen to Ancelot, gets away from the first man. He's got some blocks, turns it on, and Taryn Ancelot's going to go all the way for the touchdown. Just like that, Cardinals on the board. 6 nothing. Black does come in late behind the play. I believe it's going to be a dead ball foul. 
a personal foul against Belchase. So this will affect the extra point or possibly the kickoff. I think the coach will have the option. And Jason, that's just uh, really totally uncalled for. Nobody's going to catch Ankelard with a 10-yard lead. Uh, maybe Bob Hayes, gone years back, or some Olympic runner. So why would you want to even attempt to knock anybody down after your man is already near in the end zone? And, of course, we talked about Ankelard, number one. Boy, what a ball player. Nice play. Austin Russell in to attempt the extra point. Snap is down. Kick is up. And it's good. So your score, just 25 seconds into this game, your score, Belche 7 and Bruley 0. We'll take a quick break. Come back with more of your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week after this. Welcome back to the Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week. Austin Russell sets a tee it off from the 25-yard line as a result of the personal foul. So Bruley looking to get some good field position here. Yeah, it really puts you in the hole and gives them such an opportunity for a great field position. A tough penalty. Pretty good kick. It's taken in by the Bruley returner, and he's got a big hole. He's all the way out to the 46. And that was number one. Carl Sell Alexander on the return. And he just found the best hole he could get and took it right up the middle. So great field position here for the Panthers. I actually spot it at about the 46-yard line. Going back to that uh, play that Belche scored on, Jason, that was a what you call a bubble screen, a jailhouse break, whatever terminology you want to use for it. But at any rate, Ankelard shook off that one attempt at tackling him, and that was it. And no one else put a finger on him. Hand off up the middle. Ball comes loose. It's on the ground, and the Cardinals have it. So one play, and it looks like Randall Graff comes up with the football. Give credit to that defensive front for the Cardinals as they had stuffed the running back on the play and were able to go ahead and go for the strip. Number 95, Cedric Miller. 6'1", 315 pounds. And Can't miss him on the screen, can you? Tell you what, the running back from Bruley didn't miss him either. <laughs> kind of tough to run around like right. that. So Cardinal offense comes back to the field. Just 10 seconds tick off the clock since the touchdown, 11.25 showing. Hicks with two in the backfield. Going to hand it off to Ankalad. Patiently waits for a hole. He's still on his feet, breaks a tackle. Look at him go. Taron Ankalad's going to take it to the house again. Taron Ankalad has no problem with this Panther defense as he visits pay dirt for the second time in the first minute of the game. Uh, two lanes coaches have really got to be elated because, you know, two touches, two touchdowns, and that's Terry Anklaw, and he showed a lot of promise last year as a junior, and he's really just fulfilling all of the promises that uh, Tulane sees in him. He's just dominating this ball game, and Bruley's not a bad ball club. Austin Russell's extra point is good. So 11-15 on the clock, 45 seconds into this game. The score, Belchase 14 and Bruley 0. We'll take a break and have more of your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week after this. And we're back for your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week. Austin Russell is set to kick it away, and this time he gets to do it from the more traditional 40-yard line spot. Russell approaches, kicks it deep. It's going to be taken in at about the 10. From the return man, manages to stay on his feet. Well, he's going to be taken down at about the 31-yard line. That was Quanston Atkins on the return. Good job by the special teams. Bruley brought a nice band with him, pep squad all the way from the Baton Rouge area. Now, Bruley plays in a very tough district. They're in with Parkview Baptist and uh, University High. Look at this play. 
the running back kind of fell on bodies. It's Carl Sell Alexander. Give him a first down and a gain of about 15 on the play. He's out to the 47-yard line. Looked like everybody in the stadium thought that he was stopped on a play, but evidently there was no whistle, and he kept those legs moving. Bruley keeps everyone in tight. Give it off to the fullback right up the middle. Gains about three. And Bruley has the reputation, Jason, of being a very physical team. They, they are, although they are getting a spread formation, basically they like to run the football. And they've shown that going back to their uh, true nature, uh, they haven't put the ball up yet. Darian Cobbs, the fullback. Carl Sell Alexander, the tailback. Behind the quarterback, Blake Manola. Second and seven. They're going to hand it to the deep man in the formation. Pushes forward, maybe gets a yard or two. He's taken down, and this will bring up third. About five yards to go for this Panther offense. So big play early for the Panthers. As now they spread the field, three receivers, one back. Manola calls for the football, has time, throws, but it's knocked away. And once again, I believe that was Cedric Miller knocking the ball down. So Cedric Miller, so just a sophomore. Miller the killer right now because he's killed off two drives. Now if you notice, the quarterback for Bruley has got sort of a long motion when he throws the ball. Maybe that's why they like to run. And that plays into it with a line. When, a don, when you start winding up with the football, those Don linemen know that they can get their hands up quick. There's the snap. Kick is up. And it was almost blocked. Silva's going to stay away. It takes a cardinal roll. And Belchase is going to start at the 22-yard line. Very close to a block, and I believe. Well, Jason, will they give it to Terry and Claude again? See if it's Why three for three? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> It's worked so far. A little time has come off the clock now, 9.36 in the first quarter. Again, Cardinals with the 14-0 lead. Offense huddles to the near sideline. Yeah, you're right, Coach. Taron Anklad, really, you won't even call him a workhorse. He's only really run two plays. They just happened to score on both of them. So we'll see what the Cardinals decide to do here. Four receivers, one back. Hicks calls for the football, throws a little pitch to Devin Silve. Not much going on there as he's going to be taken down right near the 20. Maybe even lost a few. Well, instead of giving it to number one, they gave it to number one, one, number 11. So maybe they were trying to decoy. So second down, about 12 yards to go. Five receivers, Hicks by himself in the backfield, throws the pass, completes it to Silve. Silve stays on his feet, gets away from the first two tackles. He's out to about the 30-yard line. Mark him at the 31. Nice gain on the play as Devin Silve really worked hard for each yard there. Much more manageable third down, short yardage to go. And once again, Jason, that's what separates the good backs from the really good backs is the fact that you can break tackles and get yards after they make contact. Two backs with Hicks. Sends a man in motion. They're going to hand it off to Ankalad. And he's not going to get there. He's going to be maybe about a yard short. And for the first time, Bruley tackles Terran Ankalad. And this is going to bring up fourth down, short yardage. And it looks like a punting situation as Zach DeCluet comes in. Well, I don't, I don't know if the Bruley coaches have made any adjustments, but I'll tell you, anybody that scores two touchdowns right off the bat, I'd take my number one defensive play, and I'd say, you follow him you watch everywhere. watch that guy the rest of the night. So it looks like Belche's going to go ahead and go for it. And it's a first down, and look who it is, Taron Anklad. And one more time, Taron is going to take it all the way. You have got to be kidding, flag. Comes down on the near sideline. Hold everything. Hold everything. There is a flag down. 
It's actually laying all the way on the Belche's bench. What a shame, Jason. If this is where, where the flag is laying, like I said, it's in an odd position. It's all the way to the sideline. So we'll see. I think it might just be a sideline warning as the officials are talking to Coach Harrison on the near side. Uh, the shame is that this is a possible record-setting performance by Ankelon and to be spoiled by some type of sideline uh, interruption. Is the referee comes out and it's going to be Believe is that an illegal substitution? Did maybe some of the Belche sideline players come onto the field, and they can call too many men on the field? Possibly one of them made contact with the official after he's running down the sideline. Trying to get clarification, but that's a pretty significant penalty that it happened all the way over here. Why that would negate the entire play? Now it's going to be a punting situation. We, we're, honestly, there's a lot of confusion in the booth right now. Well, you know, Jason, when they call it a team game, it really is. I mean, the people substitutes play an important role, just like the guys on the field. During the week, they present the other opposing plays. And, and of course, at game time, those people need to be in a position where they don't interfere with the plays. More strangely, a penalty like that's not normally – of the 15-yard variety, the Kluwet punts it, hangs it up high, and it's going to take a Panther bounce. Somebody better touch it. Now they do. It's at about the 40-yard line of the Cardinals, so Brule will get good field position following such a bizarre turn of events. It went from 20 to nothing to Brule all the way in Cardinal territory. And the worst part, you've got to feel so bad for Anclaude. I mean, gee, yeah. you know, that's just horrible. Now, Brule really needs to do something here offensively. Yeah, this is the make it or break it part of the game, I think, for Brule, because if they don't get on the board here, then I think Belchese has an opportunity to maybe break this thing wide open before halftime. On first down, hand it off to the deep back in the formation. It's Alexander, and maybe he gets two. Mark him at the 38. So again, that Cardinal defensive front standing tall in the early goings. And so far, most every play that Brule has run, except one pass play, has been right up the middle, right into the heart of the Cardinal defense. Three receivers, one back. Manola drops back, throws quickly, completes the pass. And it's going to be near a first down as he got it to number 80, Anthony DeQuano. And based on the spot, it is a first down for Brule. That was a hook pattern uh, in front of the linebackers for the Cardinals. 7-12 running in the first quarter. Score 14 to nothing in favor of Belchase. Throw the wing tee, throw a toss. And number 31 carries. He's got a first down. That's Sam Williams. So Brule finds something here offensively. First and ten. One receiver to the far side. Everyone else in tight. Going to hand it off to Alexander. He gains about six or seven as he finds a little hole to the left side. Old belly play, handing off to the fullback. And Brule seems to be on the move inside Cardinal territory, right at the 10 yard line. Second and five, handed off up the middle and 
Looks like a rugby scrum as the pile moves down the field. Going to be a first down for the Panthers. Now they've been attacking the left side uh, of their offensive line behind big number 71 for Bruley. So let's see if they continue to go to the left side. There's 6.16 on the clock. And the officials have called a timeout. So we'll take one as well and come back with more of your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week right after this. Welcome back to the action on your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week. First and goal for the Bruley Panthers. High formation handed off to Alexander. Falls towards the goal line and he's in for the touchdown. Well, Jason, that was about the fourth play in a row off the left side, so they really are uh, uh, coming in that direction. And again, you talk about just a big change in momentum from where we were two minutes ago to where we are now. Instead of it being 20 to nothing, it's now 14 to six. And it looks like Blake Manola serving double duty quarterback and kicker tonight. He's gonna come in to attempt the extra point. There's the snap, the placement kick is up and it's good. So 6.07 on the clock and your score, Belchase 14 and Bruley seven and we'll step away and come back with more Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week after this. And welcome back to the Game of the Week. Ball's on the tee at the 40, just waiting on the officials. Now, if you're the Cardinal offense, Taron Anklot's touched the ball four times. He's ended up in the end zone on three of them. Do you keep going to him, or do you think Bruley might make some adjustments and you look for some other openings when you get the ball back here? And nice kick is going to go all the way out of the end zone again for a touchback, something you don't see a lot of in high school football. You sure football. don't see that often, not in high school ball. What a leg. This Bruley Panthers team has some... Uh, athletic ability, although ankle odds making it look awful easy. But he'll have to be in tremendous condition. I mean, he's run already. He's going to be sprints. tired by the by half. <laughs> so the offense trots back onto the field here. Again, 6:07 on the clock. Three receivers to the near side. Onclod's right in the middle of a bunch. Hicks in the shotgun with one back. Calls for the football. They're going to hand it off to Silv. Looking for some blocks. It kind of went a little too wide maybe there. Gains about two. But maybe that wasn't the alley he should have taken as he had a lot of field to work with. And maybe the play was designed to get to the sideline, but possibly Silv kind of did that almost to a fault on that one as he limited his gain. Yeah, uh, Bruley did a good job of stringing it out so that the inside linebacker could come at a better angle. Taron Anklod's out there. He's got nobody covering him. He catches it, and he's going to push the tackler past the first down at the 31-yard line before he goes out of bounds. And, and, I, and I can tell you, Bruley is still playing a straight-up defense. We used to have a thing we call star. And if there was a player that we were facing somewhere similar to Anklod, we would have our best player go in a star position, just shatter him, and everybody else would play uh, their positions. But uh, you have and to almost, give up something to stop this kid. And kind of a bizarre lineup. They're leaving Ankla completely uncovered at the line. He's being kind of watched by a safety. Hicks faked like he was going to run. Now he throws and still on his feet and getting to the outside. Still on his feet is number three, Trey Green into Panther territory at the 46. And Trey Green gets an A for effort on that one because he, he broke a couple of tackles on that one, managed to keep his balance. These Cardinal backs do not go down easily. And again, you know, Broly's only chance here tonight is to stop or take away one thing. They can't take away everything. and give credit to Andrew Hicks, kind of a heads up play to fake the run and then pass. Snap goes over his head, Hicks picks it up, now he falls on it, all the way back in Cardinal territory at the 43 is where they're gonna mark him. And if anything can stop the Belchase offense, it might just be the Belchase offense. Definitely want to avoid plays like that. Well, Bruley's in a full man front and uh, 
their defensive ends are not getting the job done. They probably uh, would have to shift to some type of 50 and get the tackles in five techniques and play the nose and try and force Belchase to run right up the middle. Give them two men on the outside. Second and 20, fake the handoff. Caught by Trey Green, gets back most of the lost yardage. Is at the 48-yard line. So this is going to be third down, about 12 to go. You know, Jason, it gives you some idea of the balance of the Bell Chase Cardinals because, I mean, uh, Anklaud hadn't touched the ball here lately, and they're still moving the ball on the field. Hicks is really doing a great job, showing a lot of uh, ability and getting the ball spread around to many of the different athletes that Bell Chase has. So five receivers, Hicks by himself in the shotgun, calls for the football, drops back, has some time, looks around, pocket breaks down. Now he throws it, and it's going to be Trey Green taken out of bounds at about the 41-yard line, fourth and about five. And you just can't teach that, Jason. Hicks takes off. He's under pressure, but he keeps his eyes downfield, and at the last possible second, he picks up his receiver. So Cardinals look like they're playing in four down territory here. Shows a lot of confidence uh, that Coach Harrison has in his offense. So five receivers, Hicks has the snap. He's looking for an opening, stays on his feet. He's gonna be very close, but it looks like he's gonna come up just short of the first down. And this is a turnover on downs. Bruley will take over. Well, uh, he didn't quite make it, but the effort was there. Like I said, not probably maybe less than a yard short. And really, this will be some of the worst field position that Bruley's going to start with the entire game. So 3.53 on the clock, first and 10 for Bruley. High formation, this power football here. Looking for an opening up the middle, and all he finds is Robert Kennedy. Oh. Oh, coach Mars, the defensive coach, is doing a good job stacking up that middle with that offensive set. So second down. Nine, and now Bruley's going to spread the field. Four receivers, quarterback in the shotgun. Drops back, looking around. He's got room. He's going to be forced to the sideline, taken out of bounds. Pursuit by Casme Antoine and Robert Kennedy. But Manola. And if you're going to run the spread, Jason, the quarterback has to be able to run the football. And, of course, that's what the Bruley quarterback just accomplished. Manola is actually short of the first down. Third down, a long one to go. Now let's see if they go back to the left side because earlier they went to the right. Runs a quarterback sneak, and it looks like he's got the first, judging by the spot on the far side of the field. So it is going to be a first down for Bruley. Chains will move the ball spotted at the 49 or 48 yard line. Uh, high school football as well as college football is becoming much uh, faster game. You know, before uh, actual game only lasted about six to eight minutes. But now with the speed up tempo, you're getting many, many more plays. Like in college, they're going up to 80 plays. And uh, so that's really giving the fans more action. First down, hand it to Alexander. He gets to the outside. A gain of about eight on the play. As Randall Graff takes him down. So second down. Short yardage situation for Bruley, I formation. Split into the top of your screen. Man in motion, they fake the handoff, hand it to Alexander, but he's stuffed. 
Once again, Robert Kennedy. Well, I tell you what, Robert Kennedy, he looked like Stonewall Jackson there. I mean, he really showed you exactly how to tackle with your eyes up and getting the lower pad level, and just driving that runner backwards. So third down, short yardage, not even really a yard. They're going to keep everyone in tight, one receiver out wide. Quarterback keeper, and this time it's going to kind of depend on the spot. And the official is going to go ahead and measure. Two contrasting teams here, Jason. The Bruley Panthers just grinding it out, trying to keep the possession in their favor. Uh, and, of course, the Cardinals just paced, fast striking offensive attack. So here come the chain crew in. For the all important spot. And as they stretch it out, he is got it by the slightest of margin. A game of inches, make sure you check the People with the chain, gang, that they didn't wrap the chain. They're, they're, you got to watch for that. Team. You got to watch. <laughs> and down through the years, uh, we've shared some stories with you. But we went to playoffs and up in, uh, I won't mention the name of the school, but, but I found that chain gang wrapping the chain when they had the ball so they didn't have to go 10 yards. So on first and 10, Robert Kennedy stuffs the hole as Jalen Green meets him. So for about the fourth time tonight, Robert Kennedy is making acquaintance with everyone in that Panther backfield. Yeah, he's like welcome wagon. Now, Jason, the secret to that wrapping the chain is you don't do it on the front end, you do it on the back end because nobody's watching so Nobody the back sees end. that part. Don't give him any ideas now. <laughs> Second down, a long nine yards to go. Four receivers, quarterback in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. He's got some blocks. Now he stops, and he's going to be taken down right at the 30, a first down. And a good run there by the quarterback, Manola. And Bruley doing the best thing they can uh, for this game. They're keeping that Belche's offense on the sideline with this drive. In this series, they're moving the ball, and they haven't gone to the left side that much, which sort of surprised me. But they are having success coming a little bit wider to the right side. But I have a hunch they're going to go back to that left side eventually. Manola fakes a handoff. He's going to keep it. He gets to the outside, turns the corner, gets the first down, and skirts out of bounds in a hurry. Just inside the 20 to about the 19. So again, as called by coach here, they ran to the left side. Caught the Cardinals sleeping, and they picked up the first down. Now, you see how fast they broke the huddle there, Jason. Uh, you can probably bet it's a running play. Just give it to the running back or the fullback, Darian Cobbs, and he just kind of fell through the pile, but he got a nice gain of about five on the play. Actually, we'll spot it at the 16, but. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, your score, Belchase 14, Bruley 7. We'll take a break and come back with second quarter action on your Plaquemines Prep Game of the Week after this.